Hello, friends and family, and welcome to our Thursday, October 29th edition of our Boring Meditation Stuff. Today I wanted to talk about Nat Friedman. Um, I don't know Nat personally, and I hope I'm not being offensive by mentioning his name <laughs> uh, in one of these videos. Uh, I'm sure he'll never watch it, and he probably won't care. Um, Nat is a childhood hero of mine, actually. He's, um, uh, he's a significant member of the early open source community um, from the late 90s and early 2000s until today. And now today he's the, the CEO of GitHub at Microsoft, um, which is a non-trivial position to be in. Um, I read his, his blog, I don't even know if they were called blogs in the early 2000s, um, when I was in university. And I remember really liking uh, his line of thought, the, the way that he would um, piece together ideas and the way that he would discuss things with people. And there was one blog post in particular where he was discussing a conversation that he had had with another uh, GNOME hacker, I believe, um, about time and about how particularly as a computer hacker, as in computer programmer, uh, a hacker in the original sense of the, the term, the one who creates, one who kind of um, teases things apart and finds out how they work and then builds, builds new tools. Um, As a computer hacker or a computer programmer, you're always trying to figure out how to automate things. Automation with the intention of giving yourself more time, giving other people more time. You're creating tools that allow people to work faster and more effectively um, and eliminate repeat work. And they were hypothesizing about the idea of um, working in the opposite direction. So rather than trying to take a finite amount of time, this wasn't exactly how it was described, but uh, I actually, <laughs> I went to Nat's website, it's nat.org, um, and his old blog is gone, so I couldn't find this post, so I may be misquoting it. Um, but rather than trying to work with a finite amount of time to figure out a way to actually change your relationship to time. So you would see all the subdivisions uh, in time and to actually have a relationship with time where your mind worked at, say, if you imagine something constant, that your mind is over here and it's working in the same way it always did, but time has been stretched out. Or perhaps you look at it the other way. Time is the same as it always was. One day is one day, and the same absolute uh, sort of singular dimension. Um, but you are able to accomplish more thought in a tinier slice. The work that would have maybe taken you one day before uh, would take you just a few minutes. Um, and that this hypothesizing about this possible scenario uh, where you could actually fully change your relationship to time and that it's really only your relationship to time that constrains you. Um, as an 18 or 19 year old, I don't know how old I was, I was fascinated by this idea. I thought that this was really fantastic. That, oh, okay, yeah, what if you could do that? And I mean, there are examples, concrete examples, right, out in the world of people who, who utilize their time differently. Um, I've worked with speed readers who can clean through uh, an entire novel in a day or two, and I can't do that, so it takes me weeks to finish a novel. Um, I'm a slow reader, though. <laughs> And um, to employ that same principle elsewhere to be faster and more effective across the same time unit 
um, would mean uh, quite a substantial fundamental change to your entire life. I've mentioned this before, but this is really sort of a fundamental principle of um, both Anapana meditation and Vipassana meditation. That within the scope of meditation, you're, you're always taking the same on a, on a quartz clock or an atomic clock or a GPS clock, whatever sort of clock you're using, our defined units of time remain the same. Time is still as it always was to the external world. And there are all sorts of complicated um, quantum physics relationships that are beyond the scope of, of these videos, um, which change our relative relationship with time. But like our common understanding of time is that it is passing in a linear fashion and that everyone gets the same amount for each unit. So uh, with each minute that passes on the atomic clock, that's the same minute for everybody on Earth. And this is what we're doing, is we're actually, we're taking that minute and saying, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to divide up the fluctuations within that minute, and I'm going to see the, the tiny bits within them. So now I take one fluctuation, one fluctuation, be it a breath, be it a heartbeat, whatever. And I'm going to divide that up into further subsections and blast them open and see if I can start stretching time apart and teasing time apart, because time is not, it is not a concrete thing. Time is not a rock, time is not a board. Um, and you can tease it apart because it's quite liquid really to your perception, but it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, but this was probably one of the, uh, the most satisfying realizations for me. Um, the first few times I did experience it concretely, like, oh, time. Yeah, it can be stretched when it. Initially, when it's stretched, it's not pleasant, actually. <laughs> the, the stretching of time, you'll feel a one-hour meditation is taking many, many hours, possibly days. Um, and that's not always what you want. Sometimes you, you're really uh, eager to get to the end of the meditation period. You're not really looking to see, oh, yes, one-hour meditation. It felt like it took 48 hours. How wonderful. Um, but this is the skill that we're learning, actually, is how to create time for ourselves in some sense or to change our relationship with time entirely. Um, and so this was, this was sort of a real turning point for me where I found, oh, okay, yeah, this is a, this is a thing that can happen, um, that is possible. Um, it's interesting, I, I notice not nearly in, in such drastic ways as meditation uh, presents the fact that time, perception of time can be manipulated. Um, but I noticed these really kind of coarse-grained versions as well in the other direction, usually. Um, caffeine, for me, is a time shrinker. <laughs> so I'll have one cup of coffee and two cups of coffee, and then all of a sudden, it's three in the afternoon and I have no idea where my day has gone, what I've been doing, what have I been thinking. I don't seem to have control uh, over my own thoughts, um, you know, control over my perception of time. And um, I think that that sort of makes sense when you think about what caffeine is and how it works uh, with our psychology and our biology. Um, but uh, it's never it's never really drastic. I'm not losing um, if one hour of meditation can be stretched out to a 48 hour period. Oh, it's taking forever for this meditation to get over. Um, it's never the case that I've had so much coffee that all of a sudden 48 days disappear on me. <laughs> oh, where did the last 48 days go? Um, but it, it is the case that cumulatively one day after another, uh, how does how is it three in the afternoon already? How is it three in the afternoon already? 
um, sometimes you do look back at two or three months and really wonder, wow, those, these months have slipped away on me. And in particular, during the pandemic, we were just discussing this at home yesterday, that um, this seems to be the case. We really don't have solid landmark events to say, oh, okay, yeah, this big thing happened, and then this big thing happened, and then this big thing happened. It's more like the same day over and over again, this sort of um, pandemic groundhog day while we're trapped at home uh, and trying to stay safe um, and sane, mind you. Um, but I think that everyone is, is starting to acquire these events, right? It, it's Diwali soon here in India, it's Christmas soon back home in Canada, and um, these and the new year are all big events for people where they can kind of ground themselves and say, oh, okay, 2020, that year is now completed and we'll move into the next year and we have some sense of um, completion, finality, and that will help us move forward. Um, but this idea of making time stretch out may not feel that appealing at the moment <laughs> while we're all quarantined in our homes. But when this is no longer the case, when the world sort of returns fully back to normal operating um, parameters, this may be something that you want to explore. Uh, the idea that it is possible to change your relationship with time and in fact solve this sort of fundamental problem that uh, Nat mentioned on his blog in 2002 or 2003, something like that. <laughs> All right. I hope everyone is taking very good care of themselves and very good care of everyone around them. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.